Welcome back everybody. So in today's video, I'm picking up my brand new V3X Matthews bow. I've been looking to get a new bow the last few years and finally uh, decided to pull the trigger with Ravelin Hill Archery here in North Climber. The address is actually Panama, but uh, I've been working with Ravelin Hill Archery literally since I started hunting, you know, over 10 years ago and they've been absolutely fantastic with everything. I've never had any issues. Daniel, Shane, James and Evan, you know, take care of everything you could ever need. You know, they're very personable and, and work with the individual and, and they're set up, you know, anytime you come over here. They have a beautiful shop with literally anything you need when it comes to hunting from food plot seed to obviously anything archery. They have uh, tree stands, you name it, they got it. And, uh, you know, they have some of the best prices around from what I've seen as well. So. Without further ado, we're actually going to set this bow up on this video for you guys and there's going to be a really awesome incentive for uh, you if you're looking to get a new bow as well. I'm going to tell you at the end of the video. So we have Shane and Daniel here and uh, Shane's going to kind of go through the setup of this new bow that I picked up and he knows a lot more about it than I do luckily. So he's going to go ahead and tell you about it because I would look like an idiot if I was trying to tell you about everything. So we'll uh, check out exactly what I'm putting on it and then we'll set it up and he'll tell you a little bit more about it. Granite riser with granite limbs. You can get any limb, any any riser combination you want, um, but that's uh, the really cool guys are shooting the granite <laughs> riser and the black limbs. I like that Shane. Actually uh, there's some examples of the other colors right here, right Shane? Yeah, you've got, uh, well this is your elevated two, um, this is your subalpine, uh, of course, you have your real tree, um, ambush, Under Armour, uh, and they do have. We don't have any black V3Xs in here, but the, obviously black is is um, a, a standard color as well. So the only thing that changed for this year was the granite, it was the new color. And you guys have a lot of the new V3X in stock right now, so. Oh yeah. You guys certainly are, are uh, above and beyond the game. There's a lot of people that don't even have these in stock yet. So Yeah, there's over 50 V3s in here between the 33 inch and the 29 inch. So there's plenty of them here right now. Heck yeah. What else are we putting on that thing? Um, well, you went with the QAD integrated um, MX rest. Uh, we'll show when we put that together. There's actually a dovetail in the riser where this thing attaches to. Um, so that's, QADs are number one selling rest in here. Um, and a lot of guys that are getting the, the newer Matthews are getting the integrated one. Uh, you went with one of the Matthews flatline stabilizers. I believe that's an eight inch. Yeah, eight inch stabilizer. Um, that's in the same granite finish. Uh, went with a bridge lock sight from Excel, five pin sight. Uh, when we put that together, we'll show how that goes in the, the new bridge lock riser, how that attaches uh, with a new Matthews Low Pro detachable quiver. Uh, the quiver and the bridge lock sight work, actually work together real well. It's pretty cool how tight this thing can get to the bow um, because of the bridge lock. And then um, the Pierce Platinum, um, number one selling premium arrow out here, went with a four fletch. Uh, we're starting out with uh, starting out with a 250 spine because uh, I think you shoot like 77, 78 pounds, and at your draw length, real good chance that that's going to tune. Um, if it doesn't, we can drop down. But mm -hmm. we weighed this arrow out; it's going to weigh right around 500 grains. We're guessing you're going to be right in the mid 270s for speed. Yeah. Um, so that's a, a pretty good little, pretty good little machine there. And then slang and a peep. You um, got it. I don't think there's anything else that needs to go on there. No, I think I think now Shane is going to uh, get the bow set up and then we'll be back with you and tell you a little bit about, you know, everything once the bow is set up. We're going to go ahead and put a quick uh, disconnect for your stabilizer, which is that right there. So that way if your 
have a case you can pop that on and off without worrying about stripping your threads, right Shane? Exactly, it's just a lot easier to get the thing on and off and change it out and, and such. So I'm gonna put that on first and get this stuff out of the way. You can add weights to the front for the back. Okay. Okay. Yep. So that'll help out some guys like a little bit heavier on the front, something that you can play with. Mm -hmm. um, you'll be surprised at what a, what a... The difference it makes. Right. And all stabilizers, you know, are, are, are good. But when you get into the really good carbon rods, then they're really doing a great job of stabilizing mm -hmm. And such. So, and that's a carbon rod right there, isn't that it? That is a very, very stiff carbon rod right there. <laughs> um, does a great job. Gets all the weight out away from the bow, mm -hmm. where it's going to do you the most good. Oh, look at that! Slides right in. Slide it in there, and then you just tighten this down. That is pretty cool. So to, to take it off, literally one turn, wow. and it comes on and it comes off. So that's real nice when you got to be putting it into a case or, yeah, or whatever. You're no, right. No. Somebody was really thinking when they came up with that. Well, yeah, they well they, they used it target for a long long time when they had the real long oh yeah so you could pop them right on and off it's so much easier now that way yeah so what's the difference this year shane between you know last year's matthew and this year's uh well the one you went with which was a 33 inch uh, actually both of the v3x's they have the uh, the bridge lock riser, um, which where your sight can integrate right into the riser. It can also, you can also mount your sight out to the outside like they always mm -hmm. have been. But this one, you, you, they have milled out in the riser for the dovetail to mount in there, kind of sucks it in tighter to the bow, gets it in line with everything. Um, once again, that makes that low pro quiver that Matthew's made yeah. hold a lot tighter to the bow. Um, which we're going to be able to see that with you know the sight and the quiver that I got on once it's set up you'll be able to see how much more you know streamlined and, and I guess that would really essentially make it more balanced I would assume exactly get everything a little bit tighter to the bow uh, spec wise uh, the only thing they did different with the, the longer model like this year with 33 which you had they added an extra half inch of brace height so the brace height on the 33 is six and a half in years, in the last few years with the V3, the VXR, everything was a six inch brace height. Um, but for the guys that are shooting a little bit longer bow or a little bit longer draw length, that little extra, that little extra brace height is a little bit more forgiving, but also made the bow fit more people. Um, now your longer draw guys, does it go up to 31 now? Yeah, so now a 31 inch draw length can fit into the, the um, marquee bow. Mm -hmm. Uh, the only other thing they did is with the switch weight cams, they added um, stay of field, SAF system. And so you can um, get a string from, from Matthews. You can actually change your strings in the field with this. Mm -hmm. um, you just rotate the cams a little bit, and there's pegs on each one of these cams that you would actually put this specially made string over, and it would take the tension off. Okay. You could pull the string. You could change your strings and cables in the field. The only thing you couldn't change would be the yoke. So that'd be like the absolute worst case scenario. You're on an elk hunt in the mountains, and something exactly. terrible happens. Exactly. And... You have that ability yep. without having to put a screwdriver through the cam and brace it on the limb and such, which I've seen all that happen yeah. before, too. So what goes on next? Uh, well, next we're going to go with your the QAD Ultra Rest Integrated. Um, this is the one. I like how you pulled that knife out. It's like you've done that before. Yeah, it's been on my waist for a few years. <laughs> um, that, the QAD Rest right there is the... Uh, Number one selling rest um, out of Ravelin Hill. Uh, I know Daniel, James, I know a lot of people that, uh, that shoot this. Built rock solid. Um, the, because it's integrated, because it's the integrated rest, you can come around back here and you can, maybe you can see the, the dovetail milling on the side of the, or on the back of the. Oh, yeah. Here. Yep. Still has the burger hole where you can mount any rest into it 
that's mm -hmm. out on the market. But this one here, Matthews and QAD got together, and you, this is actually going to clamp into that dovetail on the back, um, which once again pulls it right up tight uh, against the ball. Oh yeah. Um, you tip, you know, typical drop away. I mean, it's they're pretty goof proof and bulletproof for that matter. Um, yeah, that's yeah. The best part about the drop away is just you know, there's absolutely no no resistance on the arrow once you let that thing go there's nothing touching it well exactly and this is full containment i mean anybody who's familiar with qad you know knows about the the top bar there that um oh so your arrow can't fall out on you if you exactly you can flip that thing right upside down and and uh, it won't come out uh well i'll show you once it's on the bow but qad's you can also let down and the the rest will stay up Oh really? Yeah. So you, I'm sure you've let down before. And yeah. That arrow gets a little squirrely. Yeah. This one actually will will stay up and still keep your arrow contained. But if you turn around and you know release the arrow to shoot it, the rest will drop out of the way. Yep. Um, yeah. Yeah. My old reason, I had like a little rubber arrow catcher on it. So when you <laughs> <laughs> and you're hoping and praying yeah, that, it caught hit, it. that it hit that. Yep. Hey, That's it for your rest. There it is. I'm going to put this in the press here and get it um, wired into the cable and such. But that's the nice part I was telling you about these. That yeah. Hooks right up. Load your arrow and you can cock that so now it's ready to roll. Contained and when you when you draw, it'll finish cocking the, the rest of the yep. way. So there's no up. room in between there for that arrow to sneak out somehow. Exactly. And if, now if I let down, it stays there. Yeah. But as soon as you come to full draw, come to full draw, and if you if you shoot it, okay, it drops out yeah, of the way. So that's that. kind of nice. If you do have to let down, you don't have to worry about the arrow bumping out. Yeah. Flopping around and everything like that. And yeah. That's that's where the uh, shrink wrap comes in, kind of quiets that down a little bit. Yeah. The uh, Shane had wrapped this shrink wrap right around that bar there, and that's an aluminum. Uh, pegs i don't really know kind of looks like a field goal post but uh those are quieted right down with rubber whatever those are and then <laughs> we got a, a green d loop that i'm going to put on it so it's nice and visible like in a low light situation my strings obviously black and with a good green d loop i'm going to be able to see that uh not saying my eyesight's bad, but it's not like great either. So something a little bright colored from a D loop will be good. Shane put a little Loctite on this. What's this screw called for uh, this it's, it's dovetail? For the, yeah, it's for the bridge lock sight system or the, to lock the sight. It of the goes bridge lock. right in there and it's going to lock your sight right through that little opening. Yeah, there's the, there's the sight. Looks just like any other sight. Yep. Five pin levels three axis adjustment but here's what the difference is is how it slides right into there oh, that's cool here's the and then that screw is what locks it if you look there's a there's a detent on that carbon oh yeah mark. i could see it i'm gonna do this it just makes it a little bit easier I'm going to put a little silver mark down on the face of that bar. So you know right where it's at. So if you do have to take this thing out, you can still, you can see that. Right. You can feel that bolt. I mean, that's rock solid in there now. Oh, yeah. I'm just going to level your bow up and... So we're all leveled up. Yeah, so that's going to help. We're going to put your D loop. That was the very first arrow knocked in it right there. So that's right. 
He just got everything leveled up and he's got her marked right there for the D loop. That, see how that bubbles just a little on the inside? Yep. So now we're just going to make the adjustment to that to get those bubbles to line up. So now you're just getting that leveled and then you're going to tighten it once you got a level? Yep. Now just like that. Now everything's level. Or the sight's level to the bow. That's handy too how that bow's got the little, little bracket or whatever you want to call it yeah yeah so. they fit right in there nice and you don't have to worry about them popping out oh they'll still pop out you better stay on your toes really <laughs> I just shot it for the first time a few times and uh, we're getting the peep set right where it needs to be. What I was, what Shane had me doing was uh, pulling the bow back and with my eyes closed and getting my anchor and then opening my eye and he was, you know, able to kind of, we were able to get a feel for where that peep should be just by doing that. So we got it right where it needs to be and now he's getting her tied in. Cause that is, I put that at 13, 16, so. Not rid of the up and down. No, yeah, up and down, it looks perfect. Just left and right now. Okay, so what are we doing, Shane, and why did we have to do it? This is the Matthews top hat system, and this is how we're gonna get rid of that right tear that you've got in the paper. Uh, we took care of the up, or the, up and down with moving the rest up and down. But now we can take, instead of having to move the rest, turn the rest left and right. Come on, slide out of there. That one's in there snug. There we go. Now we just put these other shims in there. I got Well, I already have a broadhead drawing blood on me. <laughs> Now we just actually put different shims in these and we're going to slide the whole cam over. We're going to chase your tear so you're missing to the right so we're going to slide these cams to the right and get rid of that tear. So there's that. Be careful sticking your hand in that sucker. Oh, yeah, I just went, I just went by it and right. stuck myself. Doing this, you don't have to mess with your sight picture to get it to tune. Yeah, that's pretty darn handy. Okay, so we got the bow all paper tuned. I want to show you kind of what we started with and how we ended up. So we started with these tears right here, and uh, we took some finagling and got over here. And then, you know, this is what the final product is when you get your bow tuned just like you want it. See, there's no huge rip off each off off uh, any vein or it's just perfect you know you can just barely see where each vein went through with the arrow through the middle so that's what we're looking for and that's what we got one thing we haven't shown you is uh, the quiver and how it 
attaches and detaches to the bow. This is one of the coolest parts of this whole uh, V3X in my opinion. Shane's going to show you how it works here. You got this nifty little post here that goes right up in this bracket. It slides in. And then from the back side, it slides into the bracket on the on the actual quiver itself. Slides right into this dovetail. And then there's that lever that locks it in, and that thing's... Rock solid. Yeah, that thing, there's, you no, know, there's no wiggle to it. That thing is... And then no rattling and banging, no loosening when, when you're walking. And because of that, you got that bridge lock quit or that bridge lock sight. You can see the how tight it can actually get to the ball. Yeah. Now if you had a if you had your sight mounted in the you know traditional method. Yep, that's in the you way. Might, you might have a tough time. Not you, not that you can't get a quiver that would fit a, a traditional one, but that was really part of the reason they did the bridge lock was to be able to pull everything, not just the sight itself in tight to the bow, yeah. but to pull everything else right in tight. This bow just seems like, you know, with it set up and stuff, it'd be absolutely perfect for a spot and stock type setup because you really, uh, you don't need to take that quiver off at all. It's really made to be shot right with the quiver if that's your preference. And, and well, and Matthews does make a, they, they make a quiver that's a low profile, that's a, that's a hard mount that doesn't come off the bow at all. Mm -hmm. um, so if somebody does want their quiver on all the time, uh, but they just, we just think that this is going to be the, the best, yep. the best selling quiver, but there you are loaded five arrows. Um, Went from bare bow to ready to roll, Shane, yeah. you did a good job on it. And then to pop that off, just that lever, push it back. Just like and that. Yeah, the whole quiver comes off. No attachments on here. Everything's on the quiver itself. So That is awesome. And if you're going to hang it from a tree stand, I took D-loop material and wove it through here and made a little loop. Oh, yeah. So I could hang it from a, hang it from a tree stand. It's nice, too, because it's really quiet taking on and off. You know, some, some of them kind of rattle and clank and cling, you know. And this one, uh, between the hood and the gripper, there's a big, di a big distance. So some of the quivers that had everything was up here. Mm -hmm. You had a lot of tail in there, and yeah. you could get these things would be bumped out of the quiver pretty easy. And this one's got a pretty good distance between the two contact points, so there's not a lot. You're not going to get yeah. one out of there, and it and it holds a small diameter arrows uh, real well, and also your 204s and your 246s just as well. Yeah, and even with this quiver on here, it's still very narrow and streamlined. You know, it's not like sticking way out and uh, going to be catching branches and weeds and whatnot. It's really very compact and appears to be a killing machine right there with the quiver attached. I wanted to go over with you guys the arrow that I'm going to be shooting and why I'm going to be shooting it. So I'm going to leave that to Shane because he knows a lot more about the arrows than I do. So what do we got, Shane? Uh, this is the Gold Tip uh, Pierce Platinum. Uh, number one selling arrow, premium arrow out of the shop uh, last five years. Uh, it is a 166 diameter, so it's the, it's the, the micro diameter. Um, the other thing we like about this is the, the whole component system for Gold Tip. They, they put on here, they really beef the front end of it up. You can see this collar there. Yeah brass color or whatever it is that really excuse me strengthens up the front of this this arrow and gives the beef where where the business is done uh, the other thing is is this part here is a little bit larger diameter than the than the shaft itself so when it goes into an animal it actually punches a little bit bigger hole and then the smaller hole follows through so a lot less a lot less resistance a lot better penetration uh, durability on these arrows is absolutely fantastic. Uh, we've got a cement block down there that has had broadheads fired into it um, from multiple arrow manufacturers and the only ones that are still in one piece down there are the gold tips. So that's some of the stuff that we do when we're bored in here. But uh, great arrow. It does come three fletched. Uh, we've been shooting four fletched for quite a few years and really like the, the added stability it gives, especially if you're shooting fixed blades. Um, but yeah, it comes in in three fletch or four fletch. It's, uh, I think your arrow clip, I think we weighted earlier, uh, with your draw length and everything with 125 grain point, this is going to be a 500 grain arrow. Um, 
Oh, and we should go put it through the chronograph too. Yeah, see how fast see it's how going. See how fast it's going. That'll be, that'll be good, but there's not an animal in North America that's going to be able to take that and not have it come out the other side. That's, a, that's kind of a thumper right there. But. Especially where I'm going to be placing that sucker, Shane. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pulling back, uh, what is it, 75 pounds? Yeah, probably more than that. We'll, we'll, 76. 76. 76 pounds of 29 inches of draw. 28 and a half plus a loop. Um, we're guessing with that arrow, uh, low to mid 270s is what it's gonna uh, is what it's gonna crown at. Um, it's gonna be quiet. I mean that 500 grain arrow is pretty quiet arrow to be shooting. Yeah. Um, but 276 feet per second, that's still screaming fast. Yeah, that's screaming fast for a hunting setup, uh, especially when you're pushing 500 grains. So. Um, you have a pretty sharp looking setup. Like sure that. is. 272. That's what I read last time, so it was. So we shot it through the chrono twice, and it is 272 feet per second. So that arrow's screaming fast. I think that'll blow through uh, just about whatever I, I send it through. So I know a lot of you guys are going to be asking what broadhead I'm using this year. In years past, I've shot uh, Rage 2-Blade Expandable. This year, I've seen enough data and enough uh, Jello shots on YouTube. Not like Jello shots, but you know the shots that go through ballistics gel. And uh, these Grim Reapers are no joke, and Shane's going to tell you why. Uh, the one clip's going to be shooting this year is uh, the Grim Reaper 125 grain mini mag. Um, so it is a four blade. Uh, I think it's an inch and a quarter cut, four blade. Uh, so it actually has a bigger cut than um, your two blade, two inchers. Uh, we actually love these things. These The heads themselves, uh, part of the reason going to 125 is just to be able to beef up the, the head on that. Um, the mini mag also comes in a, in a hundred grain which is the same cutting diameter, but I don't know if you guys can see that or not. I mean, there's a big difference, 25 grains difference between these two heads, and it's simply just beefier. Um, and when you've got a bow that's shooting 500 grain arrow, 272 feet per second, a little extra thump in the front end of it definitely um, makes things makes things uh, a little bit better, so. One of the nice things, too, about these mechanical broadheads is the fact that you don't need a perfectly broadside shot. A lot of, uh, there's kind of a misconception with mechanicals and people saying, well, especially with the rages, that when you shoot a quarter and two shot, sometimes they say that they skip, you know, they'll hit a, a rib bone or something, and you won't get good penetration. And that's not the case with these Grim Reapers, just because of the way they're manufactured in this, this tip. I would assume, you know, just dives in no matter where, at what angle. You shot some doe last year that were extremely quartered, and you had no yeah. problems at all, right, Shane? Exactly. I think, and that was when they came out with the Pro Series. I know the the um, original series or the original one several years ago, people would talk about that, that the uh, quartering two, you'd get that to skip off. I have not heard that out of the Pro Series or the current um, Grim Reapers. Uh, I've, I've shot some animals with... Uh, quartering two and I haven't had any problem. Um, these things make a heck of a hole in them. Uh, they don't pre-open. I've never had one pre-open on me. Uh, they fly great. Uh, you get a practice, you can get a practice head that's the exact same thing as this to actually go out and check your sight pins and everything with. Mm -hmm. um, and I would definitely recommend doing that because they will fly a little different than your field points, but I want that opened up. When you, uh see the wound channel on them Shane are those open pretty much on impact so you get a good wound channel from start to finish or is it mostly you just have the wound the you know the tip hole on one side and you know the full-on opened up broadhead on the other side exactly because it, it does take the actually entering the animal to open these blades up mm -hmm. um, so you don't have a you know you don't we won't have that inch and a quarter hole on the on the on the inside yeah but it, they're not in, it doesn't take but maybe an inch getting in and though that's fully deployed. So you definitely get, you know, two holes in the thing. Um, but yeah, they're not the, they're not going to be the big, huge entry hole like you, like you, like you would um, see with some other ones. Mm -hmm. But um, that's a pretty big hole going through 90% oh, you know, of an animal broadside. That'll, that'll definitely um, open some stuff up. So, yeah. Uh, 
I'm excited to uh, launch one through a, a big buck named Paul next year. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and wrap this video up everybody. This was an exciting video for me. I haven't uh, had the opportunity to shoot a new bow in years and uh, I'm really looking forward to getting out in the tree stand this coming fall with that new equipment. Uh, the thing shoots like an absolute dream. It's amazing just shooting a bow with new technology compared to technology from a bow 10 years ago. It's like night and day. but. Uh, I want to extend a huge thanks to Ravelin Hill Archery, Daniel and Shane for all the help they were to me this last week getting that bow set up. Uh, without them, it would not be set up uh, to the quality that it is. But I wanted to talk to you guys about an incentive they're doing at Ravelin Hill Archery. So if you spend $1,000 at one time in their shop, what they're doing is giving away a Tacticam Solo Hunter package, which is worth over $100. So if you go over to Ravelin Hill before June 1st, this expires, and spend $1,000 or more at one time, which is extremely easy to do. Remember they have, obviously they have every type of hunting equipment you can imagine, not just bows, but they have targets, they have food plot seed, they have accessories, they have everything you could ever need. So quite frankly, it's very easy to spend $1,000 uh, you know, at one time. and. Uh, They'll let you take one of these home with you at no cost if you spend $1,000 at one time. And if you just tell them that you're going to use the code RAV1, uh, they'll know you watched this video and know you got the incentive from me. So you could even uh, look at the description, screenshot it on your phone, and when you go to Ravelin Hill Archery, I'm going to put the uh, address of the archery shop in the description of this video as well as the phone number just tell them that you want to use the code RAV1 that you got off KEO vlogs for a thousand dollar purchase and they're gonna give you a Tacticam solo hunter package which is really sweet I'm actually gonna do a review of this in the next week or so so you guys can see exactly how this works and if you don't want this Tacticam they'll give you the option of $100 off the Tacticam 5.0 version which is uh, a little higher end version than this one. This one takes 4K video and I'm going to do uh, a review of this one in the coming days as well. So if you guys are interested in a new bow or, or anything really archery equipment, the customer service at Ravelin Hill is uh, you know better than any place I've ever been and I can say that with total honesty. They, they treat you uh, as good as they possibly can every time and they're extremely busy and uh, you know there's a reason for that it's because it's because they're good at what they do and they're very knowledgeable about archery and archery equipment in general so thanks for watching see you in the tree stand next fall with that new bow I'm excited <laughs>